Hey, so I've been a little lax in my movie reviews lately. Uh, what can I say? Life gets in the way. And typically, I like to record these things under ideal circumstances, but I've been busy traveling here and there. I'm back home for Christmas in Indiana. So, you know, under less than ideal circumstances, I decided I had to do another review because we had another big movie come out. And that would be Aquaman. Just as a side note, there are so many movies that I've missed over the last few months. I'm going to check out Widows. There's a couple other movies that slipped my mind right now. But I'm just going to... Oh, I want to review Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which I did see. Uh, so, you know, some of these reviews are going to come in late. But hey, I figure better late than never. So let's talk about Aquaman first. This movie desperately wants to be an epic. I'm talking about epic, epic. There are hints of Lord of the Rings. Game of Thrones, and also King Arthur. And I have to say, there's one scene where the name King Arthur actually is used in this movie. The thing is, all those other films, they actually were epic. Epic in scope, uh, epic in nature, epic in story. It seems as though this movie wants to be considered just as big and epic as those films. It, it's just not. I mean, they really try so hard to make this thing epic. They front load it with so many characters. We meet Aquaman's mom and dad, and that, that story takes a little bit of time. We meet Black Manta. I'm not gonna give anything away there, but that story uh, takes a little bit of time. We meet what I believe was the king of Atlanta or the one-time king. played by Dolph Lundgren, uh, we meet him. And we also meet Aquaman's half-brother. I don't remember his name. He's the main antagonist in the film. He's played by Patrick Wilson. So we meet all of these characters, any of whom could play their own part in a separate film, but they're all squeezed in into the first 20 to 25 minutes of this movie. The script really tries to give them all their due time in terms of backstory and motivation. But it's just too much. Not only that, there's so many different plots going on here. There's so many different stories, maybe three or four different stories that could have made for one full, satisfying movie. Is the movie about Aquaman getting revenge on the undersea realm of Atlantis for what they do to his mother because of his birth? Is the movie about Black Manta getting revenge on Aquaman for what Black Manta perceives as wrongdoing against his family? Is the movie about Patrick Wilson's character trying to obtain the comical title of Ocean Master and Aquaman coming to challenge him? Is the movie about Aquaman triumphantly acquiring the legendary Trident of Atlan? Is the movie about Patrick Wilson's character uniting the five realms of Atlantis so he can wage war on the surface dwellers? Is the movie about Aquaman coming to reclaim the throne that is rightfully his? The answer to all that is yes. Yeah, it's got all that going on and it just becomes so much. And as a result, the movie is very long. It's very bloated. Here's another problem I have. I just don't buy Jason Momoa as a convincing Aquaman. I know I don't read the comics anymore. I never really read Aquaman that much as a kid anyway. The most I know about Aquaman, most of it comes from watching Super Friends on Saturday morning. But he just doesn't strike me as appropriately cast as Aquaman. He comes off as a roadhouse redneck to me. Hey, wait! What? Should we have written it down first? I memorized it, didn't you? Oh yeah, totally. What did you just say? Something, something, trident. It's not my impression of what Aquaman would be like. Having said that, I will say that watching him in this film, it's the most, it's the most accepting that I am of him in that role. Even though I don't like his casting, he did come off as somewhat charismatic. There were attributes of his that made me identify with him or cheer for him, let's say that. But that was just being gracious on my part. I just don't like him as Aquaman overall, but 
you know, kind of like when he starred as Conan years ago. I liked his Conan. He wasn't the best actor. He's improved tr tremendously. But, ah, he just, I just see him as Cal Drogo <laughs> from Game of Thrones. Having said that, okay, I accepted him as Aquaman, but it was, a, it was hard to do, but I accepted him as Aquaman. Even though, oddly enough, Patrick Wilson looks more like Aquaman to me from what I recall seeing in the comic books that I've read lately uh, than Jason Momoa. The movie just feels like a patchwork of action scenes with some, with some attempts at character building in between. There's a lot of chases underwater with lasers and missiles and there's a lake of fire. I don't know how that works underwater. There are scenes that are just pumped up with action that I just didn't find was very necessary. There's a lot of stuff going on where it just seems like you could have cut that out a little bit or shortened it a little bit. Um, I'll tell you one scene that I did like, even though I don't know how necessary it was. There's a scene involving Black Manta and Mira and Aquaman uh, in the Sahara. Oh, no, I'm sorry. They're in, the, they're in Sicily. I believe it's Sicily. And an aggrieved Black Manta is trying to kill Mira and Aquaman uh, for revenge. I don't know why. That scene did work for me. It was well shot, well staged, well plotted. The rest of the movie just seems like a patchwork of unmotivated villainy. Uh, case in point, Patrick Wilson's character. He just seems like the stock and trade villain. He just wants to conquer the surface of the earth. And they, they try to give us examples as to why, motivations as to why. They show us clips of pollution in the ocean and uh, things of that nature. But we never really get a, it just seems like it's just thrown in as a, a, as a breadcrumb for us to say, oh, that's why he's acting that way. It's not really impacted upon us why he's so angry because Atlantis looks pretty fantastic. So there's no reason for Patrick Wilson's character to be so upset and want to go to war, but they need to have a villain. So that's his motivation. I guess the screenwriters just felt like they didn't have to explain it more than what they do, what they give us. They really miss the boat with Black Manta. His motivation, there's a scene early on between Black Manta, Black Manta's dad, and Aquaman that was very compelling because I, as an audience member, I was kind of torn as to who I was rooting for, cheering for. And I'm not going to give anything away, but Aquaman is a little bit, he's kind of cold-blooded in this scene. So that made for an interesting villain right there. Uh, possibly one of the one of the best villains in the DCEU. But Black Manta doesn't get a lot of screen time. He does shine in the one scene I just mentioned that takes place in Italy. But I really think they missed the boat by not making him the the villain of the film because Patrick Wilson, I just I didn't care at all for his what he was what he desired what he was trying to do. I didn't buy into it. I didn't buy into any of him or Dolph Lundgren or I didn't buy into any of that. I did like Willem Dafoe's character. He was kind of like the Yoda to Aquaman. But man, this movie should have been about Aquaman and Black Manta. He was a very interesting villain. I would say along the lines of the villain from Civil War or uh, Killmonger. He was just as compelling a character. They didn't give him a lot to do, but they sure motivated him right off the bat. That would have been the movie I would really want to see. As the movie goes along, it just seems like it descends into a miasma of a lot of different things that have to happen before we can get to the climactic ending, the battle scene. There's a whole thing where they go into the desert and they find, uh, they have a little cylinder that tells them where they need to go to possibly find the trident of Atlan. And then they go, I'm not going to give anything away, but there's a whole other battle scene that just seems to come out of nowhere and it just adds time. It's just a plot device to get to the end, to an element for the ending where Aquaman rises out of the ground. I don't, I can't say anything more, I don't want to, but, and it, 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 the, the ending is just a CG overkill. You know, by that time I'm like, okay, I'm not really buying into this, so putting a lot of CG characters on screen is not gonna make it any better for me. The final showdown is somewhat compelling, but again, it involves two characters that I really, I'm either just meh about or just don't care about. And so that didn't really do much for me. It was cool seeing Momoa in the green and gold or orange top suit. But as I've said, Momoa, I'm kind of iffy on him as Aquaman. So 
only so much satisfaction there for me. But I will say this, the wire work that takes place underwater, uh, fantastic. The CGI on this movie is fantastic, unbelievable. The renderings of all the sea life, the sharks, the seahorses, what have you, un un incredible, just incredible. Having said all that, I think this movie does indicate that the DCEU is possibly on the right track. I saw what they were trying to do. They were taking this, they did kind of merge the seriousness of Zack Snyder with some of the fun of the Marvel Universe, or not fun, but some of the, some of the levity or some of the, I, I don't know what I'm, the word I'm looking for, but they, they did, it was the most solid movie in the DCEU yet, as far as I can recall. I'm gonna say it's the most solid. Had it been a little shorter, if they had chosen a, a, an antagonist and just stuck with that one, not tried to throw so much into this movie and tried not so hard to be such a big thing, such an epic thing, I think they would have had a really big hit on their hands. Well, they're going to have a hit on their hands. It's going to make a lot of money. But I think they would have had a financial success plus a critical success on their hands. Or I would have liked it more. But I think this movie is, even though I'm kind of writing it down a little bit, I think it shows that they're going in the right direction. I have to say that. I'm going to give this movie two and a half wheels. And I'm being a little generous there. It could have been so much better had they not tried so hard to make it so much better. I will say there is a post credit scene. And if there is an Aquaman 2, and why wouldn't there be, that one might be the one to see. That one might be the one to see. So that's been my review of Aquaman. Again, apologies for the conditions. I'm not in my studio, but I figure I got in 2019, I got to have a new attitude. I got to get these reviews out no matter where I am, no matter the conditions, no matter the situation. So I'm going to try to do them from my office where it's a little bit more control. But if, if I got to bring them on the road, that's what I got to do. Got to keep these things going. I don't want to go this far without putting out a review again. So I want to go back and review some of the movies that I missed over the last couple months. And hey, I've got a huge back catalog on my YouTube channel. So go check those reviews out. We will see you again soon. Take care.